You just got a brand new meta quest for Christmas, so now what? For starters, open up that sucker and complete the setup process. This will take you through pairing controllers, fitting the headset to your head in order for it to fit comfortably, connecting to Wi-Fi, setting up your meta account, and connecting to the MetaQuest app. Once you've connected your headset to the app and your headset begins to update, you can start browsing for apps. Start off by downloading some free demos and applications. Some apps I recommend include the Superhot demo, the Beat Saber demo, VRChat, and Horizon Worlds. You can also try things like Creed Rise to Glory. There are other things listed on screen now that are also awesome, great free applications. After your headset updates, you'll set up a boundary and customize your meta profile. Once you've done all that, it's time for the fun stuff. Head into your apps and start downloading those free demos that you've added to your library. Then head back into the store on your headset and search for Asgard's Wrath 2. If you purchased your Quest 3 before 2024, then you should be able to claim a free copy of the game. Once you've begun the installation of Asgard's Wrath 2, head back into your library and search for First Encounters. This is not only a free pre-installed application on your headset, but it is also one of the best mixed reality demos. Playing through a round of First Encounters should provide ample amount of time for your demos to download and install. Take your stab at those demos while Asgard's Wrath 2 downloads and installs. The reason I recommend trying all of these different demos is to provide you with a wide variety of different types of experiences that you can have on your quest. After identifying your genre, it's much easier to find the games to purchase. Unfortunately, the quest's battery life is likely to not be fully charged, so after you're done with a demo or two, it's likely you'll need to recharge it. Don't fret, because this is the best time to take a look through the App Store. From now through New Year's, there is a massive holiday sale where games range anywhere from 15-60% to 60 off. Take a look around and see if there's anything in there that interests you. Some of my favorite games include Walkabout Mini Golf, Demio, Eleven Table Tennis, Beat Saber, Power Wash Simulator, What the Bat, Super Hot, Population One, and Blast On. There are tons of other great experiences out there, but those are just some of my classic favorites that I always fall back on. While your headset is charging, you can also install games directly from your mobile app onto your headset. So don't be afraid to click install on a ton of different applications that you just purchased, then head off and enjoy your Christmas dinner, and then when you're back you'll have a headset full of games. Switching pace over to some general tips and tricks to keep your headset in tip top shape for the perceivable future, double tapping the side of your headset will allow you to quickly turn on pass through no matter what you're doing. This is a safety feature that you'll find yourself using more often than you'd think to navigate around your room and find things in the real world. If you head into your settings, then into physical space, you can adjust your boundary sensitivity and color, both of these providing you with a means to either increase your immersion or better ground yourself in reality depending on what you'd like to do. Decreasing the sensitivity slider means you'll have to get closer to your guardian boundary in order to activate it, whereas increasing the sensitivity means that you can activate your guardian from further away. This can be really good if you are in a small area where there's lots of walls. If you decrease your sensitivity, that means you get to be fully immersed and you don't have to worry about it while still being warned when your walls are nearby. However, if you have a lot of breakable things in your room, it might be important to increase that sensitivity, that way you're not even close to hitting anything. By default, your headset should remember a bunch of different boundaries, so if you want a more seamless experience each time you boot into your headset, go ahead, walk around your house, and create a bunch of different boundaries in all of your rooms. This means anytime you put on your headset, it'll instantly remember where it is, and already have the boundary set up, that way you don't have to do the boundary creation process every time you enter a new room. Other settings I highly recommend you toggle on are Do Not Disturb. By default, the Quest OS will notify you of messages, game updates, and any other change on the headset with a chime and a little pop-up at the bottom of the screen. In immersive situations, this can be a major distraction and completely pull you out of whatever you're experiencing. 
This next one isn't for everybody. However, I would also recommend it after using your headset for a little bit. And that is turning on the developer settings under the developer tab. This will provide you with access to a multitude of different developer settings, which can do all sorts of amazing things with your headset. My favorite of which being that you can turn off the guardian boundary. I like this because I do a lot of filming and I need to walk around a lot with my headset. However, I don't recommend this because it could lead to injury as well as the fact that it does disable your pass through in certain situations. So these settings should only be used if you know exactly what they do. So look into each of those individually before you activate them. Another setting area I definitely recommend you check out is the experimental tab in settings. This changes all the time, and this is where Meta will put all of their new experimental settings. Hand tracking when it first came out was an experimental setting, so you found it in there. Now it's a main core setting, but those are the type of settings you'll see in there. So new features that are just coming out that Meta's still testing that might be a little buggy will be under that experimental tab. So if you keep up to date with that, you might be able to try out some new things before they hit the mainstream. Lastly, I wanna stress how important it is to explore. There is so much more to the quest than a simple gaming console. Look for media consumption apps like YouTube 360 and Big Screen. Try meditation experiences like Trip. And try a workout or two. I absolutely love working out my Quest 3. My Quest 2 was a bit rough to work out in, I'll admit, but the Quest 3 is one lighter and the head straps are just more comfortable in general. The visual fidelity also makes it much clearer, even when it starts to get foggy as things do as you sweat and run around. So working out in the Quest 3 actually feels like a feasible option where it wasn't really with the Quest 2. But at the end of the day, XR and the Quest 3 are still in their infancy and there's a lot of room for growth. So watch videos such as these and stay up to date with all the latest and greatest things that you can do with your brand new Quest. There's a big future, a bright future out there for the Quest and the entire XR industry. So just stay on top of it. There's a lot more than meets the eye to this thing and I want you to dive deeper and explore. This is just an introductory video. If you want more, you can subscribe to the channel. I have tons of videos where I go in depth about modding and other things you can do to your headset in order to get the most out of it. With that being said, enjoy, leave a like if this helped you out, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody. Bye.